We all know what this is. It's a GoPro. It's the camera that inspired this Blackmagic's micro studio camera 4K. Now, I go into great detail about both of these cameras, their relationship to each other, what this does well, what it doesn't do well in the accompanying blog post. But what I want to talk about in this video is not this. It's about what this camera represents. It is the ultimate expression of the changing boundaries among chemistry, software, and hardware. And I think it is the best example I've seen recently of where cameras need to go. Hmm. In fact, what makes this camera really interesting to me is when you start attaching things to it, like the Video Assist, a five inch capacitive touchscreen display combination monitor recorder. Let's say we want to add a battery to this. Come to think of it, we should add a lens to it. Olympus Zuiko uh, 12 to 50 millimeter lens. Not my cup of tea from an ergonomic perspective, but it does the business. Oh, and by the way, unlike its cinema cousin, there's no record button. There are just a couple of buttons on the side, five, which are perfect for purpose. Again, I get into this in the post. Uh, in order to record, zoom, or whatever else, you need to use a Lank, something that most of you probably don't spend much time with, but fair enough. Now, what's interesting about this is its modularity. In fact, this camera reminds me of no other camera so much as this one, the legendary Hasselblad 500C, or in this case, the CM, actually, provided to me on loan courtesy of the great folks at KEH down uh, south. Back in 1957, when the 500C was introduced, and yes, a variant of this is the camera that went to the moon. If you wanted to go from color to black and white, if you wanted to go from ISO 25 to maybe ISO 400, if you wanted different grain structures or you wanted uh, that speed, you didn't just dial it in. You changed the film back. And if you didn't like the finder, or viewer that came with it, in this instance, waist level finder with, uh, by the way, magnifier. Well, you swapped it for something like this gorgeous angled pentaprism finder. Now, the lens on this particular camera is the Zeiss 80 millimeter f2.8 planar, also interchangeable. But this was more than half a century ago. Today, we have a different kind of challenge. We are riding Moore's Law. We are taking advantage of profound accelerations in hardware and software, dynamic range blossoming, low light sensitivity, incredible, frame rates, unbelievable, optical flaws being corrected in camera, Amazing time lapse, just pop a software switch. Now, that's great and it's terrible. It's great because every 12 months or so, we get to piggyback on these innovations. What's terrible is that we have to pay for it. So we're either very excited or we're very cranky. There are some of us though, who just decide to be happy with what they have because they recognize that it was a fantastic camera a year ago when they bought it or five years ago when they bought it. And at the end of the day, the gating factor is not the gear, but us. Still, wouldn't it be amazing? And how interesting that black magic is about as close as I've seen anyone come. Mm, red cameras, eh, they have swappable optical low pass filters, but like the black magic, the sensor is still in the body which contains the lens mount, unlike the Hassie. Wouldn't it be amazing 
if the sensor were swappable too. Now, some of the big guns in broadcast make such big investments in their gear that they're not willing to do what a lot of us are willing to do, which is say, oh, okay, heck with it. I'll trade out a $2,000 camera for a $3,000 camera this year, and who knows what I'll do next year, because their cameras are much more expensive. I know of at least one company which is now making board-level swappable resolution possible. That is to say, by replacing an internal board, cameras that were designed for 1080p can now uh, record at 4K or UHD. But what's even more interesting to me is to contemplate what would happen if Hasselblad's new CEO, a guy by the name of Harry Oosting, I think, uh, a guy who has said that he wants to return to Hasselblad's core values of optical excellence, uh, user experience, ergonomics, and what I would have to assume also includes modularity, and these really aggressive guys at Black Magic, what happened if they did some kind of deal? I think that would be really interesting. What if they did a deal with Sony? Because they are the hot hand in sensors. And actually modularized the sensor component. Wow. That would be really cool.